I'm here today, I guess, with a, a prepping video of sorts. You know, about a year ago when I was putting together my bug out bag, one of the things that I wanted to put in it was a small emergency radio. Something that was small enough that could fit in the pocket of the bag that I could take with me if need be, that I could use at home if need be. And I didn't want to have to worry about a battery. I didn't want to have to leave the light in, or the, the radio in my bag for a couple years potentially, and then have to come back and worry about, well, is it charged? Is it not charged? Is it almost dead? Is it going to run out in an emergency? Where do I keep the batteries? So I found these Eaton radios, this one being the Microlink FR160 you can see here. And one of the standout features of these is that they're not battery powered. I mean, they have a, a nickel metal hydride battery, but they're powered by a crank here in the back that you spin out, you spin around, and that charges the battery. So you can keep this in your bag for a long time, not have to worry about if it's dead or not. So that was the big standout feature. The other big standout feature was that it has weather radio. NOAA Weather Radio, NOAA is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. I say that several times fast. And they, uh, they do weather radio. So I've had this several times in bad weather. We've had some blackouts, we've had some tornadoes, some ice storms, and trying to figure out is there, is there a tornado that's touched down? Is there one near me? Do I need to leave? This has been great for that. I've used it several times. The other standout features of this, aside from no battery and then the weather radio, it also has uh, a flashlight and it has AM, FM radio and a cell phone charger. You can see here, there's the American Red Cross logo here. Eaton will donate 50 cents of every purchase to the Red Cross. And this does come in four colors, red, black, green, and blue. Let me quickly go over the construction of this. Go back to front on the back here, this rubber covering. Move this out of the way. That reveals a three and a half millimeter uh, stereo headphone jack and the USB cell phone charging port. On the back is the crank. You just spin this out, spin it around, and that will charge the battery inside the radio. There's a bit of a rubberized finish here, which matches the finish on the front. You're not really gonna be gripping it that much, but it, it look, I mean, you can't grip it while you're charging it unless you move this out here, but it's not really practical, but it looks nice for what that's worth. On the top, there's a solar panel, which you can also use to charge this. And then there is an antenna for a little bit of uh, increased reception if need be. On the top, there's also a the button for the flashlight. The flashlight is a three LED flashlight. And on the bottom, two rubberized feet, so it won't, uh, won't slide around depending on where you put it. On the face of the radio here, there is a speaker over here, on off and volume knob, tuning knob, the slider to go between the cell phone charging, the seven weather bands, and AM, FM. Up here is the tuner, and then over here there is a, a light that, when you've locked on to, say, one of the weather bands, that will show you that you're connected into the weather band, it will light up. And same thing will happen when you're locked into a radio station up here. Now let me talk about the usefulness, goods and bads, pros and cons of each of these features. Let's start on the back with the cell phone charger. Nice thought, completely useless feature. And let me show you how this works. All right, so here's my cell phone. Plug your USB cable into the cell phone, take the other end of it, and you plug it into the back of the radio here. When you do this, if you're gonna charge it, you need to take this slider slide it all the way over into the cell phone position, and that's what's gonna allow to charge the cell phone. Pull this out, you can see here that I am at 72% charge, and if I start spinning this, that will show that I'm now charging it. So it's gone up to 73%. Uh, but the likelihood that you're gonna get this, you know, that was tottering. You see, I'm back down to 72%. So I'm right there on the edge between 72 and 73 percent but the likelihood that you're going to get anywhere meaningful with this like say to 74 percent or beyond is just darn near zero uh, because you have to crank this thing forever to get just barely any charge on this so unless you can pawn this off onto one of your kids or the neighbor or a sherpa or a mule walking around a big ring the cell phone charger is honestly just 
completely useless. It's a nice thought to have on the radio, but not very useful for its intended purpose. Speaking of the crank, let's talk about crank times and how much charge you get out of it. So from dead, from no power at all, you take the crank out, you spin it around, let me put it back. Interestingly, the resistance of the crank changes if you have this on cell phone versus you have it over on one of the radio ones. It becomes a little much more resistant over there. So cranking it at about this speed for 30 seconds will get you 10 minutes of radio time. Cranking it for about a minute will get you 25 minutes of flashlight time. And I've not been able to test the, the solar panel, but they say, Eaton says that about three hours, sorry, eight hours of sunlight will get you three hours of radio time. How about the flashlight up on top? So there's the button here or the flashlight on the front. The button for you flashlight guys, this is a forward click design so you can half press it and get a light or you can fully press it. There is a small quiet click uh, that will click when it stays on. The LEDs, they're not super bright, but they're just enough that if you're in a dark room and your eyes are adjusted, that it will put out just enough light so you can kind of see stuff and get some stuff done. The light when it dies will just slowly fade out. It doesn't suddenly die like lithium batteries. It'll slowly fade out. You can tail stand it if you're so inclined, if you want to use it as a night light or to light up a room. Again, not real bright, but just adequate enough for a light that you're gonna have on your radio that you don't have to worry about the batteries with. Let's talk about the radio. The radio is obviously the other big selling feature of this, of this well, radio. So this slider here goes between AM, FM over here through all seven weather bands over to the cell phone charger here. The dot here is what you use for differentiating between AM and FM. And then when you're moving this way, there's the dot here that differentiates between weather radio, weather band one through seven and the cell phone charger. So you pick your, for me, uh, weather band four is the one that seems to have the information on it. Turn it on. And there's what you get. There's two voices. The male voice is called Tom. Female voice here is Donna. Named by uh, Noah. You can go to the Noah website and they have lots of information on this. If you're somewhere where it's in Spanish, there's Javier that will speak to you in Spanish. This is a text to speech. This is computerized. It's not a real person. Text to speech. Uh, initially, when I got this, I thought, wow, someone's got to sit here and just repetitively read all this weather. Boy, they must get sick of this but it's text-to-speech, so it can just go on forever. And it is, it's pretty handy. You just leave it on, and you can tell where the weather is. The other nice thing about this is that aside from doing weather, it will also do natural disasters and floods, terrorist attacks, even amber alerts. So it's useful for a bunch of different things other than just weather emergencies. All right, over to the, to the AM, FM now. So you slide this all the way over as AM, one in is FM. The FM reception does seem to be better turn it on, and the speaker is actually pretty darn good quality. Pretty good clarity for that. So, but there's the radio, AM, FM tuner. When it's locked on, you can see there's a, a light up here that shows that you're tuned into a station. As long as we're on these lights up here, there's a light right here between, right in the middle, that when you're charging it, that comes on. I don't know why they need a light to tell you that you're charging it because probably you know that your hand is spinning around in back of it. I guess that tells you that it's charging, that it's receiving your charge, but I don't know, they could probably have done without that little light for what that's worth. Not a huge deal, but uh, seems like something that's a little unnecessary on it. But otherwise, the weather, the, uh, the weather radio works really well. Like I said, I've used it in several, several times and it's great for figuring it out if the tornadoes come in, if the ice storms come in, what's happened with it, if roads are down, um, worked out very well. So there is the basic overview of this Eaton Microlink FR160 emergency weather radio flashlight, not cell phone charger. Nice little small thing. Pros and cons of this, it's small. There's no battery, has a nice rubberized feet. You can tail stand it, has a flashlight, has the radio. Leave it in your bag forever because of the 
charger and not have to worry about it um, dying on you. Cons, charger is honestly completely useless. And, uh, but really it's, it, it's a great little affordable package. Keep it in your bug out bag. Keep it if you're going camping, take it with you. It's just a handy little radio to have. Check it out, the Eaton FR-160.